All right, I was all ready to go, and then uh, realized I the door was wide open, and the uh, my phone was in the other room. I'm very sorry I'm running late today. I'm um yeah, not feeling great, not terrible, just you know, hard to get moving. But I'm here. Good to see everybody. Uh, Daniel's here. Ian's here. Under Pope. HS Valley. Good morning. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, that Daniel. Again. Yeah, um, with the eclipse coming up, I'm recording this on April 2nd, and there's a total eclipse on the 8th. Um, my husband and I discussed maybe traveling because we know a lot of people along the path of the eclipse. Only, um, we realized we didn't want to. A whole lot of people are doing that. So that means the traffic's going to be bad and it was really hard to get a hotel room in uh, Buffalo. And, you know, as I got, as I heard more and more people talking about it, I don't remember them talking about it, it like this in 2017. And that's when we drove to South Carolina, which is not far, a couple of hours, um, to see the totality. And so after deciding that nowhere, there are plenty of places along the path, we, um, we decided to stay home. So we are going to be enjoying our partial eclipse. The reason why I'm thinking about this is HS Valley is in the chat and they're from New Zealand. And uh, my friends were talking about traveling to New Zealand in 2028 to see the totality there which sounds pretty exciting um i've been wanting to get back to that area and i was going to in 2020 but y'all know what happened there oh and some of the times don't line up for you just very late for work today i'm sorry well we're glad to see you i'm sorry you're late Oh, Daniel's going to be in the path of totality, and uh, you're just taking the day off. That's smart. Ian's going to Erie or Buffalo, sleeping in the van Sunday night. That's smart. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting thing, and I got to tell you, if you have never seen one, it is... I got a very stark feeling of... This is why it became very clear to me about the folks a couple hundred years ago who thought that it was a sign from the gods, because it is extreme. So if you have a chance to see it and you've never seen seen it, I know I'm asking, I'm, I'm suggesting this a little late because, you know, it's a week away, but, you know, get your glasses and look up. We're just going to see partial here, but I'm... It's going to be cool. Um, anyway, I'm still working on my edits for the, ex for the existing episodes, but episode eight is in the premium feed right now. Episode nine is almost done. The, like all my steps to launch, which include, which have become, how many are there now? 16. 16 steps I have to do before I launch up an episode. But again, the 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 check mark the checklist is doing me good so far. But um then I've got two more after that, but at least if I can stay ahead of myself because you guys aren't going to benefit if I get them all done today because you won't see them till next week. Episode 8 should come out tomorrow for the regular feed. And episode 9 will be out for premium tomorrow and then regular feed on Friday. That's the kind of schedule I'm looking for. But my uh, assistant Tim said he would help out with some of the production, which helps. And I guess that's it for me with... Um, details i see the bot is not help is not working kids are asleep i love seeing you for two reasons one you're my friend and i'm glad to have you in chat and two the bot is designed to speak up when you show up 
and when you show up and it doesn't say anything, then I know something's wrong. Okay, so my shout-outs are broken. I thought I fixed that last time. Oh, if anybody was here for my Waffles for Esther stream last week, um, I've started putting up images of every, uh, every area we visited with a little story on Instagram. And that's been a lot of fun. So I'll probably be doing, um, yeah, I'll be doing, uh, and alone next, hopefully tomorrow. We shall see. Trying to log in tonight, bot, see if it's working. Maybe I should put that on my list too. Hey, kids are asleep. Do you think you could uh, say one more thing? You are helping. Oh, great to hear. Thank you, HS Valley. Wow. Oh, wow. I gotta fix bots. Fix bots. That's what I'm saying. Fix bots. All right. Uh, no, it's still not working. Oh, it doesn't think I'm online. That's what the problem is. I found it. Found the problem. I don't know if I can fix it while I'm live, but I'll try. Okay. All right. Now things should work. I have a large car, no responsibilities. Will you have a large car, no responsibilities in four years though? Who knows? We will be in touch. I think Australia is going for a Worldcon bid sometime around that in those couple of years. Yep, child free. All right. Now I got to find out which Australia. Brisbane is going for 2025 against, I guess they're going up against LA. Anyway, um, also I can say now that Valerie and I and Preemie um, are all Hugo finalists in the category of semi pro zine, where, where Escape Pod got another nomination. So, very excited about that. It's the kind of thing where if you. It, it's kind of how I feel sometimes when people tell me they listen. Because I know people listen. I've known it for a while, 20 years. But sometimes when I'm talking, and recording, I think, oh my God, that one person who said they listen, they're probably listening right now. Oh God. And then I get all weird. So I try not to think that, I try not to think that very much. But also, you know, if you look at the Hugo nominations, it's like, of all the magazines out there, they thought we were one of the six best. And that is, Gary. 
I don't know if it's imposter syndrome or what, but it's, um, we're very, very excited to be part of that club again. Brisbane Eek. Why Brisbane Eek? I gotta know. Okay. I guess we'll get started. I got my support gelatinous cube. It's awesome and intimidating. Yeah, kids are asleep. And the bot works. Everything wakes up. Hallelujah. It's very awesome and very intimidating. All right. We're going to get started. And I'm going to mark that timestamp because I am a professional. There we go. I should be writing season 20, episode 12. Hi there. Welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is a podcast for wannabe fiction writers, and I am your host, Mer Lafferty. And it's spring. And there's a lot of pollen everywhere. And I think we're getting storms tomorrow. And I f feel kind of weird. Allergies, low pressure system, I don't know. But um, in my writing world, I got my edits back from my editor. From the book I turned in six months ago. And they're going to be... I, I figured they'd be big. But I was right. Um, so I'm trying, now I'm dealing with one of the hardest things ever as a pro, which is someone saying, how long will it take you to do this? Because I already have ADHD and I'm not good at telling you how long anything will take. Anything. And now I'm being asked how long something will take me when I'm not entirely sure how much work it's going to be to fix it. And then there's the typing. There's other professional writers or, or teachers will tell you, don't do that on first draft or you'll never get finished. But on the next draft, you have to. And you have to decide when you're finished. And so I did what I usually do, which is I read over the notes and I got mad and I got my feelings hurt and uh, it was a holiday weekend so I could stand not doing anything for a little while. And then, you know, once the week started, I started thinking, okay, what am I going to do to fix the things and how long is it going to take me? I actually got some advice from other writers and almost all of them said, add more time on at the end once you think you figured out how much time you'll need. No audio? Did the audio go down? Can someone tell me if they're hearing? Shit, I don't know what to do. Um... My stream is disconnected. Okay, it says the stream quality is good. Thank you, Ian. All right, whatever. That was.
that's um that's irritating Here, here's another fun thing i don't know if you streamers experienced this or if you knew to look stuff up before you started streaming but if something goes wrong i don't know what to do there's so much of this that is self-taught or you get an eight minute video on one specific thing on youtube and one thing i've never gotten is if the stream starts flaking out what you're supposed to do so i don't know what that is um sorry about that i was talking about something what was it editing froze colors no audio and then good yeah i don't know i got i finally found a little no no found a little notice saying that the stream got disconnected a couple of minutes ago and then it says the quality's good so don't know i didn't do anything anyway i was talking about how my um it's hard to figure out how much time you need to edit a book and I, uh, uh, the kids are asleep. If you have any suggestions on what you do, I'd love to hear it. I wish Premi were here, but Premi's off being busy and important. Um, but yeah, so I need to answer my editor soon, and I don't know what to say. My process. Oh, oh, Valerie's getting very excited. My process. I did get a good, um, did do some ideas in the car when I was driver or pen on me. My software programmer husband had a notepad and a pen in his car. So that was a little embarrassing, but still ultimately helpful. So I took a couple of notes and this is on my next book that I'm taking these notes because the next book is still fun. All right. Valerie says, first I make notes as I'm writing about stuff I know I want to change. Yeah, I think I did that in my, when I turned it into my editor and I said, here, I've made the deadline, but I know there's another draft and these things are going to be fleshed out or changed. Second, I reverse outline when I'm done, revise my outline to say what I actually wrote instead of what I planned to write. Okay, this is all very good. Hope people are taking notes. and replicating stuff. Okay. So in theory, for the average like 30 chapter book, you get it done in a month. A month again? All right. 